So I like what that's doing. So essentially what it's doing, it's, it's compressing and, and lowering the, the mid without, without the unfair child. It, 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 that part was right here, but now having it in and compressing the mid and letting the, the sides breathe a bit more, it, it, it's, it's almost a bigger image. So, if, so the image in this section are, you know, it's a bunch of pipers, marching over the hills and the highlands of Scotland. So I think we accomplished that with that setting. So that's good. I'm, I'm happy with that. So let me pop back down. It's my 226s. point out quickly what what Jimmy Lee Jimmy Lee Slos is playing here because this is just a bit of brilliance I think so he finds the holes and it'll do a tasty fill but he's always pedaling that low note so you don't lose the the bottom not playing that lower octave because he's he's plays it so much you don't miss it when it's gone he's so tasteful uh, and his pocket is spot on and his tone is right in his fingers I'm doing very little EQ or compression to it so So here we have an accordion. Tim Lauer played keys. He also plays accordion. And so I just set up a KM56 in cardioid. That's a tube predecessor to the KM84 or the KM184. A gorgeous sounding microphone, small diaphragm condenser, two. It's multi pattern, so you have cardioid, omni, and bi directional. And it's a nickel plated small. Uh, diaphragm capsule and it's it's just a it's a beautiful microphone on acoustic instruments saxophone acoustic guitar and incidentally the overhead mic that we were using is the is basically two of those it's it's got uh, one stationary capsule and one movable capsule and then both are variable polar patterns so we really love that microphone and it's really nice on on acoustic instruments and, and especially the accordion. And I ended up getting a... I didn't realize how dynamic he was going to be, so it does break up a little bit, but in the track you don't, you don't really hear it too much. And on tracking, I went, th I went through the summit dual tube preamp. I, I'm not sure what the number is, but <clears throat> it's a gorgeous sounding tube pre and very open in, in detail, but still has that, that harmonic structure to it. So <clears throat> that was a really good, that chain fit really well and, and it actually takes EQ quite well too. And, and, and the other th part of it is Tim is really good we have some video of him and he's moving around the, the mic and he's actually playing into the, his placement of the mic. So the mic's sitting there, but he's in control of the tone. He's moving closer, further away to, to add some dimensionality to it. So that is just junk, so we'll clean that out.
and here's just something that I like to do. So I've, I've got a little bit of reverb on them. And if I, if I have a track like a, you know, works well for clean guitars, especially finger played clean guitars, like a Mark Knopfler type or, or anything with like uh, that kind of, that kind of style or just in general, I'll take, I'll, I'll pan the guitar or the instrument or, you know, the, the accordion, say if it's panned to the left slightly, I'll pan it, I'll pan the reverb, send or, you know, return or whatever. I'll pan the reverb or delay or both to the right. And it adds a little bit of depth to it. And I, I like it when I listen to headphones, it, it feels like it, like you're in the room with it. So especially if there's a, if it's a reverb, if there's a pre-delay, having it go just a, a few milliseconds later uh, on the opposite side gives, gives it a bit of space. It doesn't have to be hard. It can be, you know, in between. Just listen, but it, I like having that opposite uh, feel. And maybe another reverb send that's, that's on the same side. I, I don't know. Play around with that. So here's hard left. It kind of just drifts off a little bit to the other direction. I, I always like that. I'm just thinking, I'm looking at my list and seeing what I might want to use on it, but I do like what I'm hearing. So I may, I'm, I'm going to try this out. This might not work. But I'm going to try my DBX 160 chain. So it's, uh, this is number nine. So I'm going to go into the DBX 160. I'm not going to hit it hard at all. I don't think it needs it but it's then going into a 550B over here. So let me just normal that EQ and hear, hear how that sounds. So this isn't hitting at all. Now it's doing a bit of compression. Let's get where he's playing a bit more. Not doing much to it. You can hear some of that crunchiness, but that won't be bad in the mix. So for this, I'm gonna add a bit of that top end for some readiness. some of the low end here. Maybe I'll add some low mids. I'm 
sweeping frequencies, trying to find if there's something that I like. So I'm ending up, I'm doing 4 dB at 20K shelf, just for some air. I'm rolling off 15 shelf by 4 dB. And then here I've got 4, 4 dB at 240, I add a little bit of body to it. And I'm rolling out 2 dB at 1.5K on this uh, API. Let me play a little bit again. So this is with and in. That's without. Without. That's with and in. Might be a little aggressive on the top. Without. With. We'll see how it blends with the track. Yep. Yeah. 